In this lesson, we're going to learn how to do color correction to match two different footage clips. Okay, so I'm starting off here in the project file. You have zero to underscore begin. And I've already gone ahead and imported everything for you. And we also have changed the frame rate to that original 29.97 because all of the clips we're going to be working with are sequences. We don't have any MOV files, anything like that. Okay, so we've got a lot of different um, assets here to work with. And the first two that I want to start on are the um, basically the pieces of footage that we're going to be building on top of the captured footage that we shot with a camera. So that's going to be these two that you see here at the top. And you can see just from the little thumbnail here, one of these clips is quite a bit more blue than the other one. So to get started, let's go ahead and create our first composition. Now, an interesting thing that we haven't talked about for creating a composition is that instead of already knowing all of the settings you want to have and creating a new composition by going through the composition settings here at the top, if you have a clip that has similar settings to what you want to use as far as the dimensions, um, the aspect ratio and the frame rate, you can actually use that clip to kind of bypass that other process. So let's grab this longer clip that we have, which is going to be this one that says first person view. We're going to click it and drag it down onto the create a new composition button here at the bottom of the project panel. So if I let go of that, it's going to actually create a new composition with that clip in it. And it's the exact duration of um, the composition or of the clip that we dropped into that composition. So uh, another clip that I want to have in this composition is this actor clip. So I'm going to grab that and drop it onto the first person clip. Now we have a slight problem that our composition isn't going to be long enough to view both of these clips at their full duration because they overlap a little bit. So we will need to go into our composition settings and make this a little bit longer just to accommodate both of those. So it looks like this is just a little less than a second and a half long. So we'll go into our composition settings and add, let's say, we'll just put that to 12 seconds and then we can trim it down here in a moment. Okay, so now that I've opened that up, I can see the whole timeline. I'm just going to grab this clip and pull this over here and then we'll drag this holding shift so it snaps to that edge. You don't want to have your current time indicator in the way or it might snap to that instead. Then we can just come over here to the very end of our comp holding shift with our current time indicator. Then uh, we can grab the end of the work area holding shift to snap that into place. Then we'll right click that work area and hit trim comp to work area. Okay, so now our first composition has been set up and we use a slightly different method than what we've done before, but this sometimes I feel like is a little bit faster. Okay, so the big thing we want to go over in this lesson is color correction. So this clip, I feel like, even though it has a lot more blue in it, it has a much more interesting feel, just kind of from an artistic standpoint. Um, I think that it, it really brings to this composition. Now, this one just feels a lot more normal. It's got a lot more yellow in it. So I'd actually like to color correct this clip to match this one that has a lot bluer feel to it. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, you want to make sure for this method that we're going to be using that you have the info panel up. And the default of the info panel is just kind of these arbitrary values of um, these RGB numbers here. We want to change this to decimal. So you're, gonna get, you're going to want to drop this down here on the side and it's going out of my recording area but decimal is the one at the very bottom. So go ahead and choose that. And now if I hover over this area you can see that those numbers have changed from those uh, three digit numbers to decimal numbers that range from zero to one. And this is going to give you a more accurate representation of what um, the color space looks like with black representing a zero and white representing a one. So this is going to just be easier to do our color correction with and easier to do the math to exactly map them to each other. Okay, now the next thing we want is going to be an effect that we can just uh, go ahead and bring up your effects and presets 
panel and we'll type it in here. It's going to be um, one of the levels effects. So just type in levels, but we want to make sure we get levels with the individual controls because that's going to allow us to individually control the RGB um, instead of just one kind of overall hue here. So go ahead and grab levels and we'll drop it on to the clip we want to change, which is actually going to be that actor clip. So the short one at the beginning. Okay, so right away, um, if we kind of scrub back to that point in time, you'll notice, give it a second to catch up here, you'll notice that we don't really have any kind of a change in the color. There we go. Um, just by dropping that levels effect on, we need to go in and figure out what colors we want to change. And that's usually going to result by um, looking at what the black point is of our clip that we like, and then looking at the difference between the black point of the clip that we want to change. So let's move over to a part in our clip that we like and find an area that has a really dark black, the darkest point we can see. And probably a great place to look for that is down in this parking lot where we have some of these dark cars. So if I hover over this area here where we have this black car, you can see what the value is up here in the top. So it looks like we've got about a point, uh, about a point five for the R value. Oh, actually a point zero five, a point zero six for the green, and a point two five for the blue. So clearly the blue is a lot higher. Now those numbers we want to remember. So we need to go ahead and pull up something like a text document um, or something like that so that we can record those um, and then we'll be able to use them. So let's go ahead and bring this over here and Remember, that was a 0 0.05, a 0 0.06, and a 0.25. I think that was about right. I'm going to move this over for a second, and we'll hover that again. Yeah, that looks right. 0 0.05, 0 0.06, and 0.25. So um, you can remember that RGB goes in that order, but if you need to, you could label those RGB if necessary. Okay, now let's move back over to the clip that we... Um, are going to change and we'll find a good black point here. Now he does have a, a black shirt on but it's being affected by the lighting quite a bit. So let's go into this area here on this car where we've got this really black area um, that gets no light kind of up underneath the car here. So if I hover over this area you'll notice the number is about, let's see if we get in the darkest area right there, uh, point zero 0.09, point zero 0.08, and point zero seven. So eight, nine, seven. Let's go ahead and type those in. I think actually those are switched right there. So we'll do nine, eight, seven. There we go. Let's just make sure that's correct. Well, it looks like if we get into one of the dark areas, Point nine point it it definitely changes nine eight seven's probably pretty good that looks like what I'm getting for a reading right there so point zero nine point zero eight point zero seven for those values so what we need to do is take those two sets of values and kind of reconcile those so let's go ahead and come over here to our effect that we have on this and I'm going to zoom out so you can see the changes as they occur and we'll toggle down the red green and blue blue values. Okay, so what we need to do um, is do the math basically between the two sets of numbers that we have gathered and then plug them in to these values. So what we're trying to do here is get this set of numbers to match this set of numbers. So we need to find the difference between those and then plug them in to the output blacks because we were measuring the blacks. So the black that's output in this um, 0, 0.0 value here is go going to be where that difference is plugged in. So to get from 0 0.09 to 0 0.05, you would subtract a 0 0.02 or excuse me, a 0 0.04, 0 0.02 is for the next one. So a negative 0 0.04 is the difference between this number 
and this number. So we need to plug in a negative 0 0.04 to this red output black. So if you have an understanding of how RGB work together, they're basically all mixing together to create this um, color that's output as black. So if we put in a negative 0 0.04, we'll delete that zero off the front of there. You can see that it barely t changes this, takes out just a little bit of the red from that image. Now the next set of numbers we need to get from uh, 0 0.08 to 0 0.06. So that's going to be a negative two offset between those two numbers. So we'll come down here, negative 0 0.02. And that's gonna make that just a little more red because we took out some green. And then we have the big change between point. 0.25 and 0 0.07. Now up until this point, I've been basically subtracting um, this number, or excuse me, this number from this number to get that offset. So this time, because this number is um, has so far been greater than this number, now to find that offset, we need to subtract that 0 0.07 from 0.25. So We'll come up here and we'll do a 0.25 minus 0 0.07 equals 0.18. So this time we don't need a negative number because we need to go up basically in the blue value. The blue value right now sitting at a 0 0.07 now needs to be a 0.18 to um, add on to that 0 0.07 and get the 0.25. So we'll type in 0.18. And you're gonna see a big change here when we click off, we get that nice blue uh, cast to the whole clip. Now this already looks pretty good um, as far as the difference between the two clips, but we also can go in and set the white point as well. So to find the differences in the white, you would simply repeat the same process by hovering over the whitest area that you can find. Now I've practiced with this a little bit earlier and I found that by setting the white point, this was washed out a little bit too much because there isn't a really clear white point in the image. Um, this is pretty close over here, maybe this one, but it's still going to have a lot of gray cast on it just because of how many dark elements are around the area. So if you can find a very, very white image, um, that's pretty white right there, uh, then you, you might have some luck, but this clip has a lot more brights in it um, as far as the sky but it just seems that whenever I matched the two clips, I couldn't get a very accurate uh, change here. So if you wanted to, you could just go in and um, turn up the white a little bit by uh, maybe just adding like a 1.1 to each of those. And it'll just take a second to update there. There we go. And then a 1.1 for the blue output white as well. So that's just adding 0 0.1 um, of whiteness to it. So now it looks maybe a little bit closer, but again, if you tried to do this mathematically, you wouldn't be able to get a good reading on your white. Now, if you had done um, a white balance at the beginning where you had a white card, um, which we actually did when we shot this clip, I just don't have it included in the frames that you have here because we really don't need to make a, a big difference between the two. So I think that this looks pretty good just by getting that uh, blue cast to everything to match up. So um, in this lesson, we learned how to do color correction mathematically using the individual level controls.